Verse 19, Yet the Lord would not destroy Judah. Why? For the sake of his servant David, as he promised him to give a lamb to him and to his sons forever. God would not destroy Jehoram or the nation of Judah because of David. David's heart for God's house was still preserving his seed and his kingdom and his ministry 120 years after he's dead and gone. Oh, come on, give the Lord a big hand. Okay, okay. Right now, we are going to stretch and split fabric. We are going to stretch by jumping into the future 270 years. Almost three centuries into the future. All right, this is almost three centuries after David's death. He's dead. David's in heaven. He's gone. Second Kings chapter 19. And we have an Assyrian general and a king coming against Jerusalem. And Jerusalem basically didn't have a chance. They're going to be wiped out. The whole city, all the people are going to get destroyed. 2 Kings 19 and verse 34, it says, For I will defend the city to save it. God's speaking here. For my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out. Friends, let me tell you tonight, we have angels fighting for us. No matter what you're going through right now, in your business, in your health, in the ministry, in, in whatever challenges you have, we have angels all around us. The Bible says so very clearly, we can't see them, but angels are real. Psalm 34 verse 7 says, they encamp around the righteous of the Lord, and we are here tonight as the righteousness of God in Christ. Turn to your neighbor and say, you have angels around you. So look at, verse, look at verse 35. It came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when people arose early in the morning, there were the corpses all dead. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went away and returned home and remained at Nineveh. And it came to pass as he was worshipping in the temple of Nisroch, his god, his son, Adremelech, the Sherizel, and Sherizel struck him down with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Ararat. Then Esarhaddon, his son, reigned in his place. Look, look, look up for a moment. All David had was a heart and a desire to build God a house. And God said, David, I promise you, and my word is my bond, I will build your house forever. 300 years later, 135,000 soldiers were dead. 300 years later, David was killing more enemies when he's dead than when he's alive. All because he had a heart for the house of God. Come on, give the Lord a big clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, come on, you want to clap. Let's give the Lord a big clap. Somebody shout, woo! For the whole city of Jerusalem, God was still honoring the covenant He had made with David. That tells you one thing. It tells you one thing. Righteous living and righteous dividend pays rich dividends. Not just while you're alive, but long after you're dead and gone. It affects your children and your children's children for generation after generation after generation. Even if our kids are not too bright, Pastor, yes, absolutely. By putting God first, by having a heart for His house, that's the requirement. That's the Bible principle. Not only for David, but for every one of us here tonight who love God and love this house and love to arise and build for His glory. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. Oh, you want to clap? Let's give the Lord a big clap tonight. Hallelujah. God is saying this, the way you respond to me is the same way I will respond to you. And I will always do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think. 
all David did was one time at one place. God, I love you. I build you a house. As if God needs this house. Just one time. God was careful. Every juncture, every corner, every year, every moment. Watch over the promise that he made to David. Even if it means 300 years later. Wow. God will wipe out the whole nation just to keep his promise to his servant David. 